My name is Michelle Ashira. Welcome to Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Remember, you can follow us across all our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. At Michelle Ashira is where you can equally find me. So our conversation today starts off from uh, we celebrated the Menstrual Hygiene Day just a couple of few days ago on 28th, on 28th of May, that it is. And the conversation is important to still propel it in order to just break the silence when it comes to stigma. So I would like to inform that, inform you that this conversation will equally uh, be in need of involving men. And uh, I know it will be too much of information, TMIs, Regardless, it's an important conversation. So to help us discuss the importance of menstrual hygiene management uh, in the face of COVID-19 right now, so I'm joined by Dr. Lorene uh, Jepkarir, MHM champion. She'll be telling us more about that and a health policy consultant. Thank you very much for creating time for us. Thank you for having me. All right. So before even we start off, I would like to find out about the MHM championship. All right, MHM first stands for Menstrual Hygiene Management. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe I'm a champion because I've been part of this conversation since they started in Kenya, which was um, uh, about 2016. That is when I started being part of the MHM conversation, trying to pass the right information out, trying to talk to ladies. And yeah, I consider myself a champion. All right. So prior to this interview, we had a clip uh, running on uh, a very much educative clip. So I'd like us to start from a basic point, just for someone who doesn't know what menstruation is, then we can pick it up from there. All right. I guess this is where we break the silence yes. on menstrual hygiene management matters. Menstrual hygiene management, uh, we can start by defining the terms. The term menses is um, that is a flow of blood when the endometrius sheds off periodically. I do not say monthly because um, girls experience this between 21 to 35 days. Uh, if it's 21, that's not a month. So mm -hmm. I call it periodic uh, shedding off of the endometrius. And um, there's a lot of um, taboos and stigmatization that has, is associated with menstrual hygiene management. And women are just not comfortable to go through this. That is why uh, when we talk about menstrual hygiene management, we want everybody to be part of the conversation so that we break the silence and ensure that women are, can access the right material during this period. Okay, we just celebrated the Menstrual Hygiene Day on uh, a few days ago, 28th yeah, of 28th May. 28th of May. Uh, what, was, oh, what is the, uh, the theme for this year? Well, we know that uh, currently we are undergoing a pandemic with the COVID-19 and periods do not stop during pandemic. So the topic for this year was it's our time for action. It's our time to put in action and ensure that all ladies can access um, wash services. Wash is water sanitation and hygiene services as well as um, needed sanitary materials. All right. Um, so there's a documentary that was released a couple of three days ago, uh, showcasing Tana River County. We saw girls just uh, sitting on holes, <laughs> digging holes. In oh, this that's very place. sad. Absolutely. Yeah. So due to lack of sanitary towels, and then there's a lot of uh, stigma around it that th during this particular time they're not supposed to be probably in the kitchen or even being involved in daily activities back at home or even actually just being face. Face Those are some of the stories the that. We so, need to what know. are the what are you guys doing in terms of uh, breaking the cultural beliefs? All right. So, and the uh, stigma. I think those are some of the stories that we need to highlight. Uh, from back in the days, whenever we would have the talk as girls in primary school, mm -hmm. will not include the boys. So the boys always grew up not knowing what it entailed. Mm -hmm. When you soil your cloth or you stain your cloth, there will be a lot of stigmatization, they'll laugh at you and all that. And the first thing um, individual people are doing mm -hmm. in association with the government is breaking the silence around this, ensuring that the girls get the right education, the boys get the right education, mm -hmm. so that when they grow up, or as they grow up, they know exactly what is needed uh, they know that it is not a taboo to menstruate mm -hmm. and also I see a lot of organizations coming up with them um, means of providing uh, sanitary material to the girls and um, 
there's a system of government in place where they provide sanitary materials to school going kids so i think that um curbs part of the of the issue mm -hmm. but if you're telling me these stories i lighted in tana river three days ago mm -hmm. The government has been giving pass for the past uh, many years. Okay. So it's still not adequate. Uh, that is where I see there's a challenge. It's still not, not adequate. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe they need to increase on the support supply mm -hmm. or um, come up with better uh, materials that can be reusable. And girls do not need to go through the problem of, uh, or the, yeah, the problem of trying to attain menstrual material every month. All right, so how bad is it right now, considering there's, uh, most of the countries are, are in lockdown and you, uh, the advisory, you just stay at home. So these particular girls and women are at home and um, might probably be with people who just uh, have this notion like uh, uh, it's the day of the month, so we're not about to interact. So how bad is it right now during the times of COVID-19? Well, we know, uh, we'll talk about our country, Kenya. Yeah? Yes, absolutely. The, the system in place provide pads in school, mm -hmm. but now schools are closed. Yes. Yes. Yes, I was actually adding there. Yes. <laughs> now schools are closed and we're wondering, can these girls access these materials? I, I know about a number of um, NGOs mm -hmm. that are working um, on house-to-house -house basis where mm -hmm. they provide these sanitary materials to the girls and the women, mm -hmm. but about the government system, I don't know how they're going to change from school to household, mm -hmm. but one thing for sure is the systems in place. There is, um, when you look uh, at the health system, mm -hmm. from, um, from, count, from national government to county to sub-county, there's always somebody in charge up to the community level, up to the village level. These are called community health volunteers. Okay. So I know that if the government want to supply these parts to household, there's already a system in place where they can easily get to the people. But I cannot, um, I cannot say that this is actually happening because I've not seen it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what will be your, uh, from, from, the, from where you're seated, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what will be your best action plan that you call out for from the government? For the government? From the government. From the government. Yes. Okay, so um, on the 28th of May, which was um, Menstrual Hygiene Day 2020, uh, Kenya launched the MHM uh, policy. Mm -hmm. I think with this policy, once we start implementing this policy, then we'll be able to curb the challenges. Because during the, when the policy was being developed, mm -hmm. these challenges were highlighted where women, what about the girls who are not going to school, mm -hmm. what about women when they are at home and all that. Absolutely. These challenges were highlighted mm -hmm. and I believe when we start implementation, mm -hmm. we'll be able to curb these challenges uh, and also address the issues of the materials that they can use. Okay, still on matters of uh, the, the policy by the government. So the, the, UNIC, the UNICF organization has supported the government of Kenya to develop uh, the natural MHM uh, policy and strategy. So one of the strategy being the fact that it will be incorporated into the new curriculum. So is there, is there any, any clear, clear plan or implementation on this? Oh yes. Um, during the development of um, menstrual hygiene manual, training manuals, the KCD, which is the Kenya curriculum development mm -hmm. was involved okay. and they were able to bring in um, their ideas on how this education, MHM education can be implemented to school. Mm -hmm. So I think once we put it um, under the curriculum, the curriculum, the kids can start being taught from primary school. We know that uh, menses starts between age of um, 10. Mm -hmm. There are girls who even started at 7. Are we earlier? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. most of them started at 13. So once we start teaching this in school, and um, these are recommendations uh, approved by, by the KCD, I think we'll be able to curb that. Uh, you've mentioned something very important, uh, that we have young girls who actually start way earlier on their menstrual cycle. What is the importance of involving uh, young, young boys, just, uh, and also involving the men back at home in this particular conversation when it comes when you tap on the aspect of stigma? Well, we know that um, a child is categorized up to about 
10 years. Mm -hmm. So when you, there could be a bit of um, human rights when you try to teach issues of reproduction or mm -hmm. issues of menstrual hygiene mm -hmm. to a person who is considered a child. Mm -hmm. But this is where we bring in the men, the dads, the moms, mm -hmm. where we teach them. We teach them early such that when your kid is undergoing menses at a young age, you can sit at home with them and make them go through it, you know, make them understand. All right. I, I hope that answers the question. Okay. When you speak of uh, sanitary towels and um, in general, so there's an aspect of uh, looking at the financial aspect that is the financial gap. It, it may be looked at as very expensive because again it's disp disposable you just use it once and you just over and done what are what are, are some of uh, alternative uh, material products that uh, our young girls and women can use okay uh, there's a there's a lot of products mm -hmm. both um reusable and disposable okay. of the disposable products you know about the pads the tampons mm -hmm. those are quite common and we use them a lot mm -hmm. But on reusable material, we have the menstrual cup. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the reusable pads uh, and panties where you can wash, you can rewash them. Okay. But um, as for Kenya, mm -hmm. the standards for reusable pads are not yet out. It's still a discussion between the CABES and the Ministry of Health. Oh, right. So they are not out yet. Because those are about to ask the proper standard. Exactly. So they are not out yet. Mm -hmm. That is why um, when you ask me about uh, reusable material, mm -hmm. I would tell you what they are, but I will not give you intel or recommend you to use or not use them. Mm -hmm. That would be a personal decision because I cannot recommend something that I do not know the standards on. Mm -hmm. And then in, in future when you get affected, I really can't be liable to that. All right. Yes. So you mentioned another um, material product that one can use and that is the menstrual uh, cup mm -hmm. which can last for approximately over ten like years. 10 years yeah. that is. So why don't we resort towards that because it's 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 cheaper considering the time frame and uh, though yet you have to spend at a, at a point but when you look at the lifespan it's quite But you see that is a one time spend. Mm -hmm. You spend it and um, it's made of silicon, mm -hmm. as I understand it. I have a cup, okay. uh, but um, I know most girls cannot access the cup. Mm -hmm. Most girls can access the cup, but might not be able to meet the sanitation and hygiene aspect of it, because if you take it to a lady in mm -hmm. Turkana, where they do not have water, uh, according to, um, you, you're supposed to use about uh, 50 liters of water per day. But then these people in low-income areas or um, arid and semi-arid regions mm -hmm. who use only 5 liters, 5 to 10 liters. Mm -hmm. So if you ask a girl to mm -hmm. use a menstrual cup, you know a menstrual cup needs to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. And um, if it is not cleaned, then it might cause even more problems. Uh -huh. So I think the standards need to be out first and then... Um, and I would encourage the government to work on the standards quite first. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so that they do not have to take time. I know these conversations have been ongoing since 2017. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think the, they should fast track that so that um, our girls can have more options during their menses. Still on matters on uh, different materials that one can use during this, uh, during their menstrual cycle. There's, uh, um, let's look at two products here. We have, you mentioned the tampons and the menstrual uh, cap, right? And the pads. Let's go with those two okay. for this question that I have for you. Okay. So what, if, what happens for a young lady who is not sexually active? Does this affect uh, the hymen? No, absolutely not. Uh, this is where most of us get it wrong. The mm -hmm. hymen is way, way up. Mm -hmm. You do not even get to the hymen. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, um, at the just before the cervix. Mm -hmm. And when you put a tampon or you put a menstrual cup, uh, it only goes uh, in the part of the vulva. If you, the, va the, the vagina, when you look in, inside the vagina, mm -hmm. there's the first part, where okay. is the vagina, and then there's the second the part. Where, yes, so, no, it does not get all the way up. Okay. Yes. All right. I think that is very far. The I think that's that should be stressed that's, about that. That actually puts uh, parents at ease because yeah. they avoid the own, when the young girls talk about tampons and uh, their menstrual cup. That that always 
it's a question that is usually uh, come up. So let's look at a uh, couple of effects on when it comes to uh, poor menstrual hygiene. Um, as I was continuing on the conversation on uh, water, mm -hmm. menstrual hygiene is, uh, according to the SDG 6, mm -hmm. which is a, a provision of water, mm -hmm. sanitation and hygiene, wash services, mm -hmm. uh, when we focus on SDG 6.2 is where we're talking about sanitation and hygiene specifically, and that is where MHM falls in mm -hmm. uh, a lot because women right now really want reusable pads or women want options that can last but if we cannot be able to have water that's why right now it's not when we when i mention the government i mean ministry of health ministry of water ministry of education they should all come together even ministry of works because uh, when a woman is menstruating she needs a um, the wash um I keep saying wash, it's water sanitation and hygiene. Mm -hmm. So they, wa they need the wash um, buildings in place. You need a toilet, a clean toilet that has water. You need soap to wash and you need privacy. When you can't access all these things, then it's already a challenge. Mm -hmm. But uh, when, when we come together, we talk about this and make people understand, even in schools, make them understand that girls do not, you go to school, they only have six toilets, six units for girls, and there's no bin, uh, supposedly it's a flush toilet, there's no bin to dispose of the pads or the tampon or any of the materials that they are using. I think that's already a problem, that's why. The ratio, the ratio is um, about 25 girls to one wash closet mm -hmm. and about 30 boys to also one wash closet. But if a girl is undergoing menses, we should also impl um, implement a, a bit of water, maybe bathrooms, especially in high school and primary schools, mm -hmm. whether, so that if you start your periods, um, you know, sometimes they come too early or too late. Mm -hmm. If you start them and you're not planned, you can easily clean yourself. All right. So back when I was in high school, we used to have uh, a health program, mm -hmm. a health club per se, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we will just uh, you know gather as girls and just have this conversation from books and everything else. I would like to find out: Do you work with any organization that gives back to the society to these girls? And if so, what are your what are the processes that you guys uh, take on to just understand? Uh, uh, just to get a feedback from these girls and know how they're doing in terms of the whole process. Well, uh, there's a lot of organization I work with. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of organization, organization I consult with. I will not mention names because I will not um, endorse any organization. Oh, it's okay, yeah? <laughs> okay. But I will mention the work they do. Mm -hmm. I know of an um, NGO in um, Kibera mm -hmm. that is teaching women the right, um, the right education, the right way to manage their menses. Mm -hmm. uh, I know of um, one international organization that came up with this bid mm -hmm. this bid uh these are the days you menstruate okay. then these are the other days wow. so when you give it to a primary and school is, girl, so is it so easy to actually know your safe days for the women with us well i think we'll <laughs> talk about menstruation <laughs> first <laughs> no just we'll say oh yes you would know okay you would know but we'll talk about menstruation yeah all right so when you give this to a primary school girl mm -hmm. she would know the days that um she'll be prepared Absolutely. two days before her menses she'll start carrying the right materials mm -hmm. that she uses and you can custom make this oh, okay. you if your menses is six days you put six red beads. If it's right. two days, you put two red beads and the rest of the days of your circle. So you keep counting as you go. So that um, ensures we are prepared before the menstruation to ensure that we don't get any embarrassing moments where we stain our clothes or we don't have material. What about girls or women who uh, their menstrual uh, cycle prolonged the, the, the amount of periods that are actually normal, which is uh, like a week? It's a... Uh, Menstruation, the circle, is between 21 to 35 days, mm -hmm. usually. Mm -hmm. And menstruation is between 2 to 7 days. Okay. Yes. Uh, if you're having too much bleeding, I would advise you to visit your gynecologist, mm -hmm. because then um, that could be a problem. Mm -hmm. And before you ask me the second question, on the first question on what organizations are doing, 
these are wash clubs that have been implemented in schools. Mm -hmm. There's um, uh, you go to school and identify menstrual hygiene management champions mm -hmm. or wash champions. Mm -hmm. And when you have these clubs in place, then it makes it easy for the people to talk mm -hmm. about menstruation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So the commemoration of menstrual hygiene, which is uh, initiated uh, by Washington back in 2015, uh, with that particular background, uh, let's look at the milestone and challenges that you guys have, have actually faced. I mean, when we started, you mentioned the first challenge. Mm -hmm. The first challenge is from Tana River. All right. In low-income areas like, um, like the slum regions, in arid and semi-arid regions, mm -hmm. Women, uh, women cannot access adequate material. Okay. Or you go to a region and the girls are not going to school, mm -hmm. so they can't really access the, the government provision of uh, sanitary material. Mm -hmm. uh, wrong information being passed out mm -hmm. is the second challenge. The third challenge is a lot of stigmatization, a lot of taboos associated okay. with it. Mm -hmm. In African community, mm -hmm. very few dads very few dads have asked their daughters, are you okay, Can I, um, we're going shopping, would you need extra pads? I don't think that is a conversation we ever have. Mm -hmm. So I think not having the right information out is a very big challenge. But um, when we talk about the milestone, what has been happening so far, uh, number one, the menstrual hygiene management uh, policy is out. Mm -hmm and it's been launched. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have a standardization of, um, of stand standardization of the materials mm -hmm. that is ongoing. Uh, we also have many upcoming individuals and NGOs mm -hmm. who want to go out there and help the women during this period and provide um, proper sanitary material. Mm -hmm. We also have a uh, the training manual for schools mm -hmm. and for for other people like right now i know most ladies in the counties have been trained because there was a program where all 47 uh, first ladies in the counties are being trained so that they can they can be a stronghold in their county and ensure that the girl child needs have been met Okay, so guys, remember you to follow us across all our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. Use the hashtag entrepreneurship. And we have a question for you uh, on our Facebook page. That is, how much have you ever spent the most on a, on a leisure activity? So make sure you head on to our Facebook page and keep the conversation going. So I would like to find out on uh, what would be your final words, not as just as a doctor, but uh, as a lady, yes, as a woman, as a uh, someone uh, young, young girls can look up to in the society when it comes to passing out the message onto the fact that uh, uh, there's stigma in, in, and we need to break this stigma in terms of uh, the silence when it comes to menstruation in our society. What will be your final words? Uh, we know that women are, women run the economy and if you can lock a woman up for three days or five days when she's menstruating we know what for economists we know what can happen in three days when the economy is dying so we need to empower our women and for us as ladies it's normal to menstruate uh, this is something we're going to do for so many years of our life and the more we accept it and find easier materials to use or better materials to use then we'll be able to be more um, effective in whatever we do and also I want all of us ladies and gentlemen to unify our voice and ensure that the right message is passed out there reduce stigmatization and give a helping hand whenever we can there you have it. Ladies, they run the world, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So remember to keep the conversation going on our social media handles. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Lorraine, for coming through and, it, and actually educating us and uh, helping the me. process mm -hmm. of breaking the silence when it comes to matters of menstruation. So guys, back at home, uh, remember, keep it right here on Why in the Morning Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media platforms. At Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me. Remember, we have a question 
for you and the question is how much have you ever spent the most on a leisure activity how much have you ever spent the most on a leisure activity that's on our facebook page y254 channel hey there i want to hear your thoughts on this keep the conversation going we'll be right back and i'll be sampling uh your comments live right here so you don't want to miss this and much more so right now we're going back to a musical break and we'll be right back Y254 